Okay, well, welcome everybody. It's a great pleasure to introduce our, our own Professor PD here from Purdue ECE, also a member of the PQSA, of course, and Berk Center, to give you today's PQSA seminar. So Pete, Peter, I guess sometimes also goes by Peter, he is a Richardson, Richard and Mary Jo Schwartz professor in ECE. And uh, he is uh, really has done a tremendous amount of interesting work involving, I would say, all kinds of novel materials for uh, device, particularly transistors, uh, very highly cited work, for example, called Discovering the Phosphorine and other interesting tools and materials. I think today he will talk about another recent example. Um, he got his PhD from Max Planck Institute and then did postdocs, a very uh, rich experience both at NTP lab in Japan, but also the Princeton University and Mac lab uh, in the US and working in labs and um, before joining Purdue faculty in 2005. He has uh, won many awards, uh, fellows both APS and IEEE, also the uh, winner of the Artem Berman Award, which is the highest award in Purdue for applied science engineering. Um, he is a highly cited researcher for many works I have uh, mentioned. So really great to have you, Peter, to tell us I guess, a recent example of some exciting developments. Okay, thank you, Yong. Thanks for the introduction. Also, thanks for the, the invitation from the Quantum Center. So I just uh, uh, talk some of the recent work we are doing. You guys can hear me clearly, right? So on the, uh, yeah. I quote, uh, I changed the title a little bit. Uh, okay, most of the time I will talk about uh, more deep in physics, but uh, I think uh, in general, I probably introduce some of this material first. So that's the title I changed to the fundamental properties of a new Van der Waals material called uh, Trorium. So uh, the outline is here. So I first introduce some background of the Trorium, then I will mostly talk about uh, the material development at, uh, at Purdue. And we we'll also make some device, uh, you know, fundamental characterization, but most of the time I will talk about uh, the magneto transport. So in the P type of a terrarium, basically we first time can see the sugar nickel that has an quantum Hoy effect. And more interestingly, at, uh, at the N type of terrarium, so we can really identify, this is the first time can realize so-called uh, well semiconductor, so we can really, uh, uh, you know, see the periphase and also convince this is the the transport is dominated by the well fermions. Finally, it's a summary. Okay, we first go back to the what is the thorium. So thorium was was discovered many years ago, and uh, some of you must are also familiar with this. So the uh, the right is the. Uh, Picture, uh, you know, pic uh, image of the, the bulk terrarium. Look, it's a very shiny. So a lot of people think this is, is a metal, but in reality, it's not a metal. Actually, it's a, a narrow band gap semiconductor. Okay, so that's what people well know. So the band gap uh, 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 of the terrarium, a uh, bulk terrarium, is 0 0.35 eV. Okay, so it can be widely used for infrared detector and even with some other other uh, compounds, okay, uh, two six, it's, a, uh, it's a well known. But the people probably didn't pay too much attention, at least, uh, you know, uh, all the decades, okay. The reason is I want to emphasize on the new wave of research of Van der Waals materials, I, I, I kind of believe so I want to demonstrate it to you. Actually, terrarium is a windy Van der Waals materials, and uh, you know thousands of research worldwide are mostly work on two D Van der Waals material. But I fundamentally, terrarium is a windy Van der Waals material. So it has the all these blue balls is basically is the terrarium atoms. So you can see actually is a is a helical structures can be left handed or right handed. So, but it's uh, along this one atomic chains. That's the fundamental atomic structure of the terrarium. And the interaction between these atomic chains is a Van der Waals force. 
It can be formed as a 2D films, as I will show you later, but it can also interact and mostly is like in the 3D forms in the, in the older days, okay? So that's the Torium. So interestingly, actually, you know, uh, generation by generation. So if some of you remember, actually, Torura is a hot research topic in the 70s. And actually, I look at the literature, even in the 60s, there's some uh, seminal work even did at Purdue. So the Torura is a, a popular semiconductor, you know, uh, research material in the 60s and the 70s. This is the one slide, actually, uh, my, my PhD advisor, actually, Klaus von Kretin, who is famous because of the discovery of the quantum hole effect. So he prepared for me, actually. So you can see, actually, interesting story. So in the 70s, actually, Torurian is really his PhD uh, thesis and, uh, and the uh, after the PhD uh, in Germany, they're called the Hubble Tatsun. So like, uh, you know, like a senior uh, postdoc or more or less like that. So that's the, his research topic for 10 years, you know, before he really discovered the quantum Hall effect uh, in, uh, in silicon MOSFET, then MBE, gallium, arsenide, all these magnetic transport fields are moved to quantum core field. Then we all forgot what is uh, uh, Tororum is. So you can see in the 70s, actually in Würzburg, now it's still famous in, uh, in topological materials 2.6 research in, uh, in Würzburg. So uh, University of Würzburg. So you can see in Würzburg, they can glow the single crystal uh, Tororum in a very big size. They started uh, all these dopings, uh, N-type dope, P-type dope, uh, just as your semiconductor research. And they even tried some magnetic transport uh, and uh, find the, uh, the, the surface state, all this, but, uh, uh, but they never, of course, found the quantum core effect. Otherwise, uh, you know, from creating were not found in the silicon MOSFET, right? So, and uh, you see, this is one of the publication in the 71, and even, even uh, kind of historically interesting is uh, his advisor is called uh, uh, Landwehr, so he's a very respected, uh, famous researcher, you know, in the 70s, 80s, uh, and so on in Germany. So actually, I was picked up by Professor Landwehr among hundreds of Chinese students. Eventually, I got a, a fellowship, so eventually he recommended me to Professor von Kretin, uh, you know, finish the, my PhD. So that's why, you know, we're back to some uh, you know, really history, some old, older materials, but uh, however, all, all the rest I want to show you, we are really way beyond the, the research in the 70s. Okay, that's uh, we are working on this tutorial. Okay, so I first- Looks of, like uh, there is a question from Rucho. Yes. Uh, uh, hi, um, I have two questions. Uh, yes. The first one is, uh, um, you said that the system has a band gap of a certain amount. Um, yep. So why is this material opaque? Why it look like uh, uh, shiny? It looks like a metal. Yeah. Uh, because you are uh, um, because it's a narrow band gap, right? So you mostly our visible light is a much wider band gap, right? So that's my oh, I see. Yeah. I see, I see, I see, I see. So, but it's not metallic. It is an insulator. It's not metallic. Yeah, a lot of people think of metallic. When they, yeah, but that's for sure. It's a narrow band of cap semiconductor. Yeah. And my second question is yes. that, uh, given this uh, beautiful picture that you have up on the slide here, yeah, um, uh, do you see um, dichroism or something like that? Uh, selective transmission of one polarization but blocking off another. Ah, uh, that's uh, that's some of the research we are doing now, okay, okay. so, uh, you know, but it's very challenging, okay, so sometimes, you know, you, you don't underestimate the work in the 60s, 70s, right, <laughs> so, uh, you know, a lot of things were lost, you know, uh, you know, not the generation by generation because of the big gap, you know, I see. like uh, 30 years, so I, we are picking up a lot of, lot of even uh, we are kind of cooperation with the uh, uh, chem chemistry department on some optical studies also. And uh, I, I'm open to, you know, all you guys. If you have any idea, I'm really happy. I think that, so 
fortunately, the, now I still think our Purdue is leading on the, uh, in this field. Okay, so although more people are wo start working, but uh, we are really started much earlier. So then we are in a much more wider scope. So that's why there are a lot of opportunity. If we are you are interested, we can keep uh, yeah working on that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. Thank you. Enjoy so that's it. why I say why uh, we think we are to do is a unique position. So we basically uh, we uh, we developed the, the a very unique uh, material synthesis. This is a com uh, come to Professor Wenzhu Hu from the industrial engineering. So they developed the called the uh, hydrothermal synthesis uh, method. So you can glow basically millions of these uh, toroidal flakes but in the kind of 2D flake, 2D forms. Although it can be easily uh, formed in the kind of nano-wise, but, but that's <laughs> now all 2D research, right? And we are not very focused on the wires, but we are mostly focused on the 2D films. That is very easy. These are single crystals, high resolution TM, really showing you that you can fish the, the flakes up you know, on the substrate, then you can do all kind of electrical, optical, mechanical, all kind of research on these materials. Okay, so that's the, our foundation. Then, meanwhile, my group also do uh, PVD or PVT method. You can uh, glow similar of the uh, of the these two D uh, films. Uh, however, most of because of limited um, uh, resource and manpower, so most of our focus is on these uh, like a solution-based uh, growth breaks. So the, all, most of uh, our work uh, following is based on this solution break, okay? So you can go to a little bit more detail. We have a lot of cooperations with, uh, for example, this is in France called the Nano Pass work and some simulation in UT Dallas. So uh, uh, I don't go to more details, but I want to catch most important information here. First of all, these films is a single crystal, and you can form like a 2D kind of uh, uh, f uh, films, okay? That's what we study. Eventually can sin down to monolayer, bilayer, so on and so forth. And uh, the band gap calculation, of course, showing you is a 0 0.35 EVs in bulk. And um, more interestingly, actually, this material is, a, first of all, it's a semiconductor, has a narrow band gap, but meanwhile, they have a lot of similarities as the, as the graphing and the TMDs, but it also has, has distinguished properties, okay? So that's why it's not too far from uh, graphing TMD, for example. So this is the Boreal Zone, uh, what it looks like. So they have uh, the most important in the transport or even in optics is called the H, H point, okay, H point. So this is more or less like a K point in graphing, okay, right? So or TMD. So then it also has the H H prime, the hexagonal. So that's the most important point. So uh, you know a lot of transport showing you, okay? So that's the, the. so okay. So like many of our, uh, our previous work, so we can, you know, we always because you can see this is one atomic chance. It's, you can imagine. And across the chain is the Van der Waals force. So this material must uh, on its topic, right? So uh, in the 2D plan, right? That's a, a very similar like uh, force frame or black phosphorus. So that's why you can do a Laman spectroscopy and uh, really see these uh, on its topic property very, very clearly. So you can see actually the distinguished uh, peak A1 like this are uh, change with the thickness of the film, you can change from very thick, almost like a bulk, like a 30 nanometer, down to monolayer, bilayer, trilayer, and all these can be uh, by the DFT calculation to convey, uh, you know, because of softening of these uh, covalence bonds, so make it uh, some uh, characteristic shift. So, and more interestingly, actually, we are, of course, electro engineering uh, department. We first uh, need to do the uh, transistor, right? That's m most of my research related. So then we build up these uh, very simple transistors on these 2D terrarium films. So you can see actually the 
this is a, a, about around the five nanometer thick. In other words, it's a few layer kind of system. You can see actually the uh, room temperature, the field effect mobility can be 700. Uh, in 2D material, of course, uh, in home mobility, this is a very big number. It's almost uh, comparable with uh, uh, black phosphorus where work uh, for several years. And uh, more importantly, or much beyond uh, the uh, black phosphorus, why, you know, later on our group mostly work on terrorium uh, recent years is because it's air stable. Okay, this is uh, one of the data showing you, you can build up the transistor, you know, you made a fab after the uh, fabrication, 10 days, you know, two months, half a year, one year, probably it's done to change as suppose usually stable semiconductor is. And uh, force frame, these are not very as stable. That's the, uh, you know. So this is net. just exposed with nothing cover. Nothing cover, that's a very mm -hmm. simple Go Just go ahead and fabricate, okay? So that's why you can make a hundred of device with different thickness and look at uh, drain, uh, you know, like a mobility on off ratio. That's, uh, that's uh, you know, that's because of stability really gave you this chance to do that, okay? So, so this is a one advantage, you know, uh, not only high home mobility, and I forgot to mention, so like unintentionally, this material usually is a P-type. So that's why later on, I showing you how we can access the conducting band by doping. Okay, so the, so all the days, really very, very few work on the N-type. Okay, so that's because this material is always intrinsically uh, a P-type. All right, so we can build up uh, better transistors if we use a ferroelectric gating like uh, HZO. So, so then you can push actually the uh, drain current. This is a 300 nanometer channel length actually can be other one ampere per millimeter. This is among the uh, you know highest kind of drain current usually people can do on the 2D 2D material systems. Okay, so you know as a transistor guy, we always. Uh, use the uh, drain current as one of the you know figure merit to 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 address it because you have to have high contact uh, high uh, a good contact and a high uh, mobility material uh, very you know very conducting then uh, you can have high current meanwhile you through the on, a good on off ratio then can make uh, the device really off so that's the uh, simple kind of uh, approach. So now I move to, to an interesting part because as I mentioned, most of these material is a P type, but uh, we realized and actually the student discovered. So once, because we do top gate, we always do LD, uh, you know, as a dielectric. Then we realize actually, if you glow LD at a low temperature, uh, you know, you have a lot of fixed charges on your aluminum film or half new films. So actually, because the transfer the charge, charge transfer, you can make this P-type uh, transistor become N-type transistor. And really showing you here, you know, just the, the difference is just because of the transfer layer by uh, the charge transfer from the uh, low temperature LD. So you can build up N-type fat. Because you can build an N-type fat, so that's why your, in other words, your family level can be really in the conducting band. So that's why you are able to uh, really find the, uh, the topological properties of this uh, very unique material in Tori. Okay, so so that's uh, that's and we did more work at Tori itself. It's also a very interesting material. So it has a lot of thermal electrical properties. Okay, thermal electrical properties, right? That's why sometimes top, you know, big atom and also you know I see. Yun Yun probably did some, right? So, you know, the, the you know, bismuth telluride also has a good uh, ZT or something like that. So that's why we cooperated with the Xin Feng Shu's group, you know, in mechanical engineering. And uh, I summarize here, so our conclusion is uh, by really the careful measurement, the ZT can be as high as 0 0.63. So it's quite uh, reasonable, good numbers. And the key, the deep, most uh, <clears throat> difficult part, as I, I think, by, by the Laman shift to particular the thermal conductivity, the suspended freak, and uh, uh, there's some uh, detailed technical challenges uh, should be 
uh, should be take, taken care of, but we, uh, you know, we really did that. So this is, a, so the thermal electric property is also interesting in general. Okay, so this now is I a few, yes. few layer, uh, few layer, few layer. around the uh, you know, it, it, uh, around the five, you know, three to five nanometer. That's the most uh, regions we are work on, yes, but it's not the one monolayer. Mm -hmm. Mo one monolayer is still quite a challenge, you know, because of fundamentally, as you see, the as you see, the Laman, you know, really uh, the peak start to soften. In other words, it means this material start to reconstruct, right? It's a little bit different uh, monolayer from the, uh, you know, let's say five layer one. You know, five layer one pretty much uh, sustain the, the original thorium problem. Yeah. By the way, I have a question for the, the material yeah. part. These yeah. uh, solutions, these are tellurian. Did yeah. you check maybe with the XPS or EDX to show it's really 100% made of tellurium, meaning there's no other atoms bonded. Uh, yes, I did, uh, yes, I did, right? So uh, in the middle part is tellurium for sure, but there is some, let's say, sub nanometer, maybe, uh, you know, uh, by XPS, you can see there is a uh, tellurium oxide, dioxide there. So, so very, very thin, you know, it, it, it's a possible exist, yeah. But it's not the other element that depend on your uh, your 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 uh, accuracy, right? The uh, resolution, but uh, it's uh, yeah, it's mostly it's uh, it's true, you know. You know I, I I don't I don't have the number. Let's say it's uh, how many nine, right? So that's I don't don't have. But uh, we can see mostly it's true, yeah. Or or, or you say ninety ninety nine point nine percent probably is true, yes. Okay, so now we, so as I mentioned, that this is topic, so you can imagine, right? People immediately ask me uh, this kind of question. So what's the conductivity or mobility on this topic in the plan, right? So uh, then we did, uh, you know, simply it's just that you make a kind of ring kind of uh, con uh, contact, then you measure the conductivity around, we do by Lama, we do know what is the atomic chain directions. So that's why you can uh, identify the direction and measure transport. Actually, you can see just uh, 15 to 10 percent to 15 percent of a difference in terms of conductivity. But uh, it's on its topic for sure. Okay. So, but it's not as we, uh, you know, people may imagine because of the uh, van der Waals uh, interaction between the chains may be very different, right? As we imagine. But the, the interaction between the chain to chain is also quite strong. So that's why from 2D film point of view is just a, a more, a transport just to have 15, you know, 15% kind of uh, difference. Okay. So, so, so then the, we did some, is, yes. Uh, so is the conduction stronger along the chain versus? Yes, the conduction the is stronger along the chain. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Weaker across the chain. Yes. So. Okay. Yes. So and we it, yes. Uh, and is it possible to think of it as a, uh, in the two D film? Can I think of it as a nano wires of these chains coupled with each other? Yeah, you can think of this way. Yes, but it's a very strongly coupled. This okay. Way. okay. Right. So, all right. So that's why the this, chains. This you know, such a P does not seem to be. This is not as large as the phosph phosphorus. It's phosphorus. a comparable. Comparable. Yeah. Yeah, comparable. Okay. Uh, phosphorine is also uh, on this topic. But uh, because at the older days, people don't find that on this topic. So uh, once we do phosphorine that time, on this topic, it becomes a lot of attention, right? Or uh, interest. So, but uh, now it's, uh, you know, like again, similar. So that, that's why, you know, that's the situation. Okay. Right. If you find a 10 to 1, maybe people are excited. Oh, that's a big on this topic. But now it's just 10% to 15%. All right. So, so then we can look at some mechanical properties. Okay. Because we study the force frame. So that's why we build up all these uh, possibilities. Basically. So this is a kind of sp a small kind of apparat we build, uh, build with a company. So we can stretch it. Uh, stretch the uh, basically the freaks, okay? So it, these are freaks with uh, TE freaks. So we do know by uh, Lama, we do know the atomic chain is along this long, long this side, okay? So that's why the C axis. 
So you can imagine, you can stretch, right? You can stretch in uh, around the atomic chain C axis, or you can stretch across the atomic chain the A axis, right? So then you can look at the Laman, let's say we, we just look at the Laman peak, uh, these uh, three catalyst peak to see how change these peaks, okay? So this is uh, another kind of anisotropic study. So you can imagine, these along the atomic chain, it's all the is a co uh, is a covalent bond, right? They are strong, so that's why you stretch that. So then the lama peak uh, will be shifted, right? So then, meanwhile, you, if you stretch across the atomic chain, so then all these uh, interaction is a van der Waals force, right? That's weak, so that's why these this peak is not changed too much. On our accuracy, uh, on our you know uh, resolution, so you can see there's a big change here. Really tells you the all atomic chain and the cross is interact uh, cross is the is the van der Waals force. Okay, so this is another way to uh, uh, determine that. And we did more actually because you know fun, because two D re research is a very clouded and a lot of work. And, but this Wendy van der Waals material is very unique. So that's why we spend more efforts to want to highlight the Wendy properties. So this is one of the interesting work we did. So by, as I mentioned, now it's not a solution based. We also build up the uh, PVT or PVD method can grow the uh, terrorium uh, flakes to the films. Now we use this approach so we can grow the atomic chance inside these nanotubes, right? First one we choose is the carbon nanotube, okay? Carbon nanotube. Carbon nanotube, uh, you, you can have different dimensions. So this is one of the example. So if you have 2.3 uh, nanometer dimensions, you can glow kind of 19 atomic chains of the terrorium inside of, of this two nano, uh, nanometer tube. And if it's reduced to 1.5 nanometer, you, you can calculate, okay, or simulation, doesn't matter. You can only limit it to three. And even more, of course, become two. And even more, the smallest we can get, okay, is 0 0.8 nanometer. So then you really can just feel one atomic chain of the terrorium inside the, the single wall carbon nanotube. And the high resolution TEM really uh, convinced you, you just have one atom by one atom. Because it's a 1D van der Waals material, so it's able to close the material inside, like uh, longer than the micro dimensions, okay? If you remember, uh, imagine if you glow silicon, okay? Probably you cannot glow one atomic chain of silicon inside uh, one carbon nanotube because it, it's a original, the atom, for some way, they remembers what they should be because the, out, uh, the electron in the out shell maybe have their, their, their preference. That's why they, in the bulk, they form this one the uh, van der Waals. This is a kind of really new field. I really interested to cooperate with, uh, you know, the center, some, if we can inspire some of our idea, you know, can, can do much better work. Okay, this is a very, you know, uh, or, you know, kind of initial kind of work. Okay, so the, so then you can do uh, do llama. This is growing in carbon nanotubes with different sizes. Yes, different sizes. Yeah, okay. carbon nanotube field is much well developed. So we are, you know, of course we interact with many other uh, groups. So we eventually it take time, but eventually you can throw out different size. You know you know, then you do this kind of experiment. Yes, then of course a high resolution TEM and then uh, the llama is more straightforward as we, we, uh, we can take, uh, take a- uh, uh, Yes? If I could ask a question, if it's really inherently 1D, how can you make 2D material out of it? Because Van der Waals inside the film and across multi-layers, yes. why doesn't make an agglomeration of 3D? What is the driving force to make this uh, Exactly, uh, that's a good question. I, uh, you know, in the substrate, you probably a uh, little bit easy to understand. So that's why, you know, in the substrate, if you, uh, you a lot of experiment, right? You tune the temperature or the flow uh, conditions. So. In, in some of the narrow windows, you start to grow films, but uh, 
in other other process windows, you glow mostly is nano wise because it tends to glow nano wise. Okay, that's because the substrate maybe hold uh, the force hold that able to you know in the two D plan glow. But in the solution, uh, I imagine okay. So in the solution, the same thing because the like the water you know they have the surface so kind of help you get to some of the narrow window can extend it in the 2d form uh, 2d film yeah i see so it's more of a kinetic of the growth yeah that is detail need that you know can can, can be more studied but we are not the expert on that but that's why that's what i imagine yeah 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 so so we can do llama and then you can see each different, uh, you know, thickness that all the llama and peak are, are really change. You know, really change because the atomic chain inside the carbon nanotube, uh, there's a confinement to make uh, these covalent span also different in some way. But we did a uh, uh, cooperate with uh, uh, this is the University of Washington in St. Louis. The, some of the calculation really confirmed with us, okay, our experiment uh, and is 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 right to some extent, okay? So more interestingly, actually, I'm fascinated by this data and uh, I hope we can, we can cooperate in particularly in this center, maybe we can move, move forward. And if you really carefully look at one atomic chain inside one, the 0.8 nanometer carbon nanotube, right? And surprisingly, you are not really just have have the chlorine atom one by one, like a straight, you know, you imagine like that. Actually, it is a helical structures, okay? It is still like the bulk, three atom, one unit, three atom, one unit. Let's say this is the right-handed kind of helical structure. And it, it is survived in one atomic chain. So in other words, like these, Chlorine atoms, you know, the, they know how they form with enabling another chlorine atoms. Yeah. So this is really the data showing you, you know, high resolution and you can show that. Okay. So then, okay, then we can build up a transistors. We always do. So, but uh, we have to change the systems, not to, uh, not for the carbon nanotube, because the carbon nanotube is too conducting. You know, we know metallic or semiconductor phase, but it's too conducting. If you're a uh, toroidal inside, then you are have two conducting channels. So you cannot build up a transistor. So, uh, or you cannot distinguish this signal is from the TE or another signal is from carbon nanotube, right? So that's why we have to change this tube become boron nitride nanotube. So that's why we cooperate with Michigan State, they can grow that. So then so again, you can grow two nanometer, uh, the smallest uh, boron nitride tube now so far they can grow is two nanometers and then you can grow three nanometer, four, five, so far, so forth. So then we build, uh, we fill in this thorium, then build up, uh, uh, you know, transistor. So you can really do P type, N type, and, uh, you know, do some, uh, you know, that because it's now really atomic chain, it's so less uh, material there. So that's why the, Capitalistic is a little bit noisy as expected, but we also can benchmark with these carbon, uh, these uh, nanotube, you know, with glow. So, but uh, that's the summary of the dimension and the mobility. So that's that's what we are trying. Okay, uh, in that you know, like uh, build up atomic uh, uh, chain kind of size kind of, of course, uh, if able to make a really, probably this is a dream, I don't know, take three years or five years. So if you can build a transistor on one atomic chain of the thorium, right? And that's probably the smallest ever transistor you can do, right? Okay. So now I move more to the magnetic transport. I think I show uh, the, uh, you, know, uh, you know, I should appreciate it. I really a lot of support, you know, we are able to uh, really set up the dilution fridge and, uh, you know, do, do this work and, uh, right, so, okay. So, so this is a, a P-type, okay, as glow, we do nothing, just make a whole bar like everybody. So then we, uh, we, we measure it at, uh, at, uh, at a low temperature, you have to, like uh, 300 millikelvin and at a high magnetic field, the particular data here probably uh, were taken at the high magnetic field lab in Tallahassee. So, 
Then that's the really first time. So you, you can see actually uh, very clearly Shukunikov the has oscillation and the quantum hole plateaus. At that time, the density is high, you know, high 10 to uh, 12. So that's why the, the fusion factor is high. And, uh, and you can see each, each, each uh, minimum is uh, a fusion factor, uh, a factor of four. So that's why that's exactly come to the, uh, to the band structure of this material. It's very like a graphing, you can see, right? It's a, a four, it's not a, a two like, uh, uh, like uh, gallium arsenide, right? Okay, so the reason is because these, uh, these hexagonal structures, this H, H prime has a valet and uh, the spin effect to valet effect to, so that's why uh, this is a, a two uh, uh, effect of a four uh, uh, in the transport. And you can do very standard, uh, like uh, uh, change the gate, and then you see the Shukunikov, the Arsen, uh, oscillation shift. Uh, so then, and then you can, uh, from the Shukunikov, determine the uh, density and compare with the hole measurement, compare with, uh, let's say, capacitor measurement. And so everything mostly is uh, under, under control, basically, this uh, new 2D material systems. And then you can tilt the angle. This is all these standards that you back, you know, everything is proportional to perpendicular magnetic field. So that's why it's a, a very, very standard because 2D electron gas, uh, uh, not electron, 2D whole gas systems on P type of terrorium. So, and a little bit unique, okay, a little bit unique. That's in the 70s, people do already know, okay. So in the 70s, uh, already know. Now, we're, uh, you know, there's some other work, good work, our past work in, in Japan are ongoing. So eventually we will take more on that, okay. This is called the camel structures, actually involved some of the spin textures there. So camel structures, so uh, in the P type, okay, it's a very unique, okay. So it, so usually you have just, uh, you know, uh, like a uh, valence band, like to just uh, have um, one maximum, but the, the real, in this material, uh, the P, uh, valence band actually is two maximum and there is a dip in the middle, okay. So this, this property actually you can be found uh, in the P type of transport, okay. Because at the high field, you know, like high field, you tilt it like a C, Z momentum tilt it, then eventually make the effective mass actually every day if I make the in enhanced. So that's why in the RXX, you can see a, a, a kind of bump uh, coming. So, and the, in the transport, actually, you can also see in the, in the uh, high field, okay, this is uh, the, the last Shukunikov that has oscillations. We can see at the uh, here uh, is uh, what 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 the magnetic field of uh, probably 18 Tesla. So actually, you can see the 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 maximum peak. You can see this is 10 Tesla, right? Usually, you in, uh, in, uh, uh, decrease temperature. This oscillation becomes stronger, stronger, stronger. Okay, so you can see five Tesla is stronger, but you go down further. Actually, it's, it it's a start to drop. So this is abnormal. This abnormal actually can be understand from the camel structure. Okay. So I, I because limit time, I think I move to the most important part uh, we did on the N type. Probably is more interesting for this center and for you guys. Uh, okay. Baby, yes. can I can I yes. ask you a quick question about the previous slide? Yeah. So please. on the lower right hand figure, what what is being shown? Low on figure right. F. Figure F, okay. Mm -hmm. Figure F is uh, is uh, the simulation basically showing you, okay. So it it more accurately say the peak should be goes up because like uh, uh, because I mentioned that this uh, this, this uh, camel structure have some uh, spin term there, right? So that's why at the at the high magnetic field, so the the parallel uh, the uh, parallel to the high magnetic field, the, the spin term is up. The energy is up and the uh, right one is down. So that okay. makes the average effective mass actually change the way the, way the P field. That's our explanation why the Shukunikov the has oscillation shows some abnormal. That's the simulation curve. It's not the experiment curve. Yeah. So, so the curve is actually the energy versus KZ 
Is yes. that it, right? Yes, that's correct. Yes. So why is it changing with magnetic field? That's the cementum. Ah, oh, I see. Yeah, like so, um, yeah. in other words, um, uh, in, in an intermediate phase, uh, it looks like you have something like a flat band over a certain region of K. Yes. Am I correct. right? Yes. You mm -hmm. have a... Yes. Uh, do you see anything special happening there? Because this is like a Van Hoof singularity in density yes, of states. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. But the way it didn't, you know, that, that time, that, you know, of course, you know, all, I have to say, although I'm showing you all these uh, interesting things, but, uh, you know, this 2D material in general, uh, you know, a particular we are doing now in this tour, the mobility is still limited, right? We are at the top of southern level. <laughs> even at the Millicamp, <laughs> you don't know where to compare with the Galio Asana even 20, 30 years ago, right? I so see, I see. Limited. So a lot of things, you know, yeah, the quality is a limited C or more fancy interactive physics uh, in some sense. Yeah, okay, right. Okay. Great, thank you. So thank you for the question. So now I move to the most, uh, I, for myself, feel, you know, after so, a couple of years of research, more interest or exciting part uh, we are able to do on, on, on terrorium, okay? So this is the conducting band of the, of the terrorium, okay? As I mentioned, usually it's just a P-type of this material. So that's why uh, people are very hard to N-type, you know, in the bulk because you don't have the gate can mod modulate, you know, everything must be thin that you can modulate, right? So that's, uh, that's why all the days, uh, although people do know the band structure, but experimentally it's difficult to access that, okay? So, uh, so first uh, talk about the, uh, what's the unique? It's a ve very simple, okay? So unique is the conducting band is H, H, at the H point, okay, H is the most, uh, you know, because this is like a, a nano band gap material, but at the H, right, this is the valence band and the conducting band uh, in the transport. So in the, uh, in the H, actually, it's a kind of a crossed. So it's uh, in now the modern words is a called a, a well knot, okay, this is a well knot, okay, yeah. So this is a well knot. So that then how to build up this transistor, as I mentioned already, you glow a low temperature LD. So then you can make it uh, become N-type, okay? Because the charge transport. So that, that you can see from the transport, you can see from gate, you can see this is really N-type, right? You go to negative, you turn off the device and then you go to positive, then you get a lot of electrons. In, in your hover, okay, in, or, or the device, okay? So that uh, can be N-type, so you, very simple, you build up a hover, so then you go to low temperature and go to high magnetic field, okay? Because uh, uh, in, uh, to look at what, what, what the transport is. So now we, uh, you know, this is again in the Tallahassee, we are able to really, uh, this is, you know, 45 Tesla, the, that's the highest uh, uh, study field ever you can in this, uh, on, on the earth you can have actually uh, do the experiment. Okay, so, uh, so we get some good support from the national lab. So we're able to measure it, okay? The device is really uh, good looking. You know, you can see very well uh, developed the shock negative house oscillations and also quantum plateaus. And because of the huge high field, so you can start access the field in factor three, you know, four, three, two, you know, these are low numbers. Okay, so that's, uh, we, will, we are keep doing that. Okay, yeah. So, uh, so this is, uh, we can see that. Uh, then of course, same thing like a graphing or others. So you can use a gate at the fixed magnet field of 42 Tesla. You can also start to resolve field in factor four, three, two. So on and so forth. And uh, this is a lot of data. Now we can plot these uh, kind of 3D data. Uh, X axis is a B and the Y axis is a gate voltage. All these lines basically we call the Landau fans. Okay, Landau fans. And the blue is means the resistance is low or zero even, okay. And the red means the peak. So. And you can see, uh, actually, this is a real data, nice data. So, 
actually you can see there's some little bit change at the 12, uh, 12 Tesla. So the real data is we measured everything at Purdue from zero to 12 Tesla with this particular device, okay? So then we get to this, uh, the left data. So then we go to high magnet field, we measure 12 Tesla to 45 Tesla with the same sample, uh, then you can see almost can merge it. So this really tells our, our data is, uh, the device is also a very high quality. And uh, all inside of these data, there are a lot of details, okay, we are doing and uh, we will figure out all these details, okay? So, you know, uh, it'll take some time, but, uh, but the general is just the, the, uh, the quantum hole effect and the Shukunuse has. And a lot of uh, related with the spin, the spin texture, spin orbit interaction things are happening in these crossings. We're actually, we're we are, we are solving all these details now, okay? So, uh, you know, one of the example is that you can, Look at the experiment that I mentioned. We're right, uh, we're summarizing this paper. So uh, you know you can see the crossing, and sometimes it's not linear. Okay, it's more like a parabolic. So okay, so then we can do some calculation. We you know do one one by one kind of understanding what's going on. Okay, it's complicated. It's because have the uh, spin orbital interaction has these Zeeman terms. So have the all phalase, and you know there are a lot of details, but. Uh, but I want to just uh, focus on one particular uh, things, okay? One particular things, okay? Is this so-called, uh, why we call it well, this is a well fermions or, uh, or well not on, on, on the, the valence uh, conducting band minimum and it's a topological properties, okay? So if you, uh, actually there's some theoretical work related, I, I cited here, uh, cited here, okay? Uh, you know, several years ago already, people do predict, okay, the terrorium, this particular material terrorium, have this kind of uh, spin textures, okay, spin texture uh, structures, okay. So I, I, I just uh, sim simplified, highlighted here, okay. So basically, if you are zoom in, look at this uh, well not, basically that uh, inside the the spin is not the spin up and the spin down, okay? It's uh, the radical direction or spin in and the spin out. So if you turn this, if you turn this spin around this one cycle, okay? If in ideal case, okay? So then you bring a barrier phase, okay? Or geometric phase, phase inside. So, that that the, the, just like this, okay. So that's uh, but uh, you know, barry phase now, uh, barry curvature, all this get a lot of attention in the condensed transport. But in this particular uh, materials, it, it's itself in you know intrinsically because it, the 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 way or not it has the uh, barry curvature and a barry phase. Okay, so so because we have very well uh, defined Shukunika uh, has you know minimum maximum, so we can choose. Uh, you know, all these uh, plotted on the land, uh, the uh, land offense because one over B here. This is a very standard magnetic transport study quantum hole, just do that uh, all the time, okay? So then it's a land on level M. So usually, okay, usually if it's a gallium arsenide without the spin orbit in interaction, okay? So, so first of all, the, the, it's a factor of two, just to have a spin up, spin down. Second, all these go, uh, if you extend it to zero, in, in other words, it's the highest magnetic field ever, this should be go to zero. No uh, barrier phase, okay? No barrier phase, okay? So, but uh, with this terrorium, because it's intrinsic property, actually, you, if you extend it to, uh, to zero, and the most of the cross actually around half, that's just the pi, just the, the barrier phase. You, so you can plot in another way uh, through the gate, all these uh, interact, you can see it. from Fermi level change from little bit up, down, and the most of them uh, still see the uh, well, uh, it's a well Fermi, it's a still see the, the uh, well properties. So that's why it, it is around the, around the pi. Okay, so that's the main, main kind of, uh, uh, you know, convincing kind of results we can get. 
So, so sometimes you know how to accurately determine the uh, determine the minimum, maximum, always challenged. Okay, so so we did more work. Okay, careful work actually. We not only uh, take the minimum, maximum from the low x x. So we also from the sigma axis. This is a tensor kind of transfer. You can do actually both. Actually, you can see there's some minor change here, but the both in the in the sigma axis or low axis all showing you clearly a barrier phase. Okay, so that's what. And uh, we did more than just a one device. So actually, here listed uh, probably tens of devices we measured at the low temperature, and all showing you around the half as a. Uh, as a barrier phase. So that's why we're very, con you know, we actually we are very confident to really we uh, detect the barrier phase in the N type of uh, toroidal and really convinced uh, that the N type of toroidal is, uh, is a well uh, material. And uh, because it's a semiconductor, that's the first, a lot of well things is uh, a semi metal. Okay, that's probably the first uh, material, have the well property but it is a semiconductor. So because semiconductor, so we can change the gate and change the frame level, okay? So uh, be, uh, beyond that, actually, we have a lot of spin, uh, uh, you know, uh, experts in our, our Purdue. So actually we can look at the, uh, the low field. Actually, this is the so-called weak anti-localization because of strong orbit interaction materials. It's not usually like a gallium arsenide, uh, the, in the uh, in the resistance, let's say, is a peak. In the conductance, is a dip. So this material in the conductance is a peak. So this is really showing you here very, and you can fit these uh, these curves and get to the coherence lens or these other you know related with the quantum transport these properties uh, uh, very easily. Okay, it's a summarized in this PRV paper. Okay, then you can, of course, measure the effective mass, the average zone out, this is from Shukunikot Dehas. This is where all data actually, uh, around the minute data actually is around 0 0.1. It, it's almost exactly like a theoretical work or older literature people know from the, some optical measurement. Okay, this is really, uh, really uh, consistent. Okay, all right, because of limited time, I think, uh, yeah. I, I give us a summary of what we can we did at Purdue. So we realize use this one divided water material. We re realize by solution based or PVD based, you can have the two D kind of toroidal films, and sometimes few layer or even mono layer you can call the toroidal if you like, and we can uh, really realize the uh, freestanding single atomic chain of the toroidal inside uh, the single wall carbon nanotube. Then, then we studied, uh, you know, cooperate many other groups. We studied uh, uh, the anisotropic, not only transport, optical, thermal, and the mechanical properties that I'm showing you. And in the P-type, we do, that's the original, we initiated the transport work is we can see the quantum hole and the Shukunika de Haas in the P-type. But the more and interesting or exciting part is in the end type, we can see the topological property of this uh, as a well fermions. And we are keep exploring the, the particular top, topological properties from the transport, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, so that, that's the, the summary of the, so far our work on Torium. So, here is this, uh, the list, of course, uh, we get some support from uh, NSF and uh, Air Force and uh, Army particular. So, and uh, these are students, uh, you know, particularly in the transport is uh, Chiu Gang, you know, now is, uh, uh, yeah, uh, graduated in UCLA a postdoc. So then, uh, then issue is uh, from Professor Hu's group and uh, many others in my group involved on this work with, at Purdue, we mostly cooperated with Xianfan, Haiyan, and also Wen Zhu, and also the um, many other groups, because, you know, the whole aspect of fundamental property involved a lot of setup, let's say, you know, like a uh, high magnetic field, like uh, nano RPAS, all these are, have to work with the national labs, you know, the France group, and also the high magnetic field lab, 
they are continue support me for more than uh, 15 years, you know, yeah, we are rooting the uh, user there, yeah. Okay, that's, uh, uh, yeah, we really appreciate all the help and uh, cooperation with other groups. So this is a summary of, yeah, uh, what I want to sh show you today in, in this particular top topic on troll, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter, for very interesting, actually many interesting properties of this new material. I think uh, we have time for uh, several questions. Yes. Uh, can I ask, Peter? Uh, yes. Hey, uh, I think we sort of, uh, do, do, do you think um, uh, it would be, would it be possible to induce superconductivity uh, in these material? It's uh, too, mm -hmm. uh, too disordered to low mobility. Especially, of course, it's interesting. Uh, yes, I, I know. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 we sent you some, some sample before, right? So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so yes, it would be fundamentally, it would be very interesting because it's as, you know, yeah. it has one chain, right? One T, right? Uh, initially, <laughs> right? If you have really high mobility, then if you really have a, a superconductive contact on very good superconductive contact um, interface, right? We all know what we want to say, right? So, sure. so yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, that would be interesting to explore. But it would be a long way to explore. The reason is, uh, I still think this material, you know, the mobility is still the limitation. Uh, it's uh, for superconductivity. Actually, mobility is not that uh, big of an issue usually, right? Yes. Um, Actually, sort of the uh, my student uh, finished uh, almost finished commissioning the AGA system, so we have very clean uh, uh, superconductor now uh, at Berg. So he's yes. uh, sort of there are some small changes in the gas lines yet to be done. Um, so as soon as he is uh, out of the quarantine, which is he is now when he will finish that. And then uh, actually that is something that certainly we can try again to- Yes, yes, yes. I definitely open that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, definitely, yeah. So I'll, I'll talk to him when he gets back from- But, 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 but the, the problem is along this line, your competitor is that you are next door in the Arsenal, right? So, right? so that's why, you know, we need to always benchmark with the silicon guys. That's 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 no, the thing. No, no. <laughs> yeah, we can, actually yeah, we are we working with Indian Martian, right? Yes, yes. And uh, the point is there that sort of uh, it's missing. Yes, yes. It's extremely messy. So this is, uh, uh, with Indian Martian, it's uh, no clear cut what's actually seen there. Yes. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, if you really go to a single, and, and one of the question there uh, is, uh, of course, the, uh, 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 the the number of channels. Yes. yes. And if you get, go, can go down to a single channel, then most of these questions become uh, moot. Yes. Yes. And uh, I'm sort of not saying that that would be possible right off the badge, but sort of certainly. Yeah, that, that would be a very, you know, I can you. imagine this will be a very difficult, uh, yeah, but the, of course it's an exciting goal, right? So that takes some, some time, uh, if we really, yeah, but we can work on that for sure, yeah. Yeah, I will uh, uh, talk to my student when he, yeah, he's uh, on a COVID uh, currency now, but then we can certainly sure, 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 yeah. uh, look into that. Yes. I think Vlad has a question. Vlad? Rather, please. Hi. Uh, well, uh, thank you, Pega. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Nice talk. Uh, you're always excited to see new materials. So my <laughs> always excited about the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, my question is, uh, not surprisingly about optical properties. So how much uh, optical properties explode for this uh, 1D van der Waals materials? And specifically, the very straightforward thing to do is just to do spectroscopic ellipsometry and retrieve the electric permittivity and see how it's anisotropic. And most important, whether there is off diagonal elements to provide magneto-optical effects. In oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Asymmetric, yeah. then it could be not reciprocal behavior. Yes. 
that could be done very well. We actually, with uh, Yong Chen and Sasha, we're working on a uh, wild semi metals project. We have Nuri, and yep. we're looking at kind of uh, these flake like structures, yep. looking for very similar things. So, yep. uh, if you're interested, we certainly would love to look at to optically characterize them, unless it has oh, been. Oh, I'm happy to do that. You know, as I said, this is material. We, now, even uh, my group can synthesize ourselves also. So, that's why there's a, uh, there's a plenty, plenty of material. That's it's not an issue. So, that's why, yeah, the, the really optical uh, uh, study is very limited, uh, right? Because, uh, you know, this uh, it's not like. A, a, Black force for time now everywhere. Now this actually this material much interesting than black force, but the, the timing is different. So that's why. So that's uh, it's good in some sense. You can really come down do some so, solid work, right? Yeah. So I'm, yeah, it's, it would be interesting to look at. And to be so, specific, yeah. uh, we have a postdoc, uh, 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 Dimit, who is on this uh, uh, meeting, working between yeah. Monk and myself. Yeah. So Dimit, please uh, put it as a uh, thing to do, uh, basically try to characterize optically and see whether there is this off diagonal elements for the electric permittivity, so that possibly magnetic optical effect and the non reciprocal behavior. That's very much along the lines we are doing anyway. Yes, yes, this yes, yes material yeah. would be very, very interesting. It would be interesting because, and uh, as I mentioned, so this material is, uh, you know, it's different from graphene, different from TMD. But it's not too far different, okay? You know, sometimes it's totally different, and it's another story. So there's some lot of similarities, but there's fundamentally it's different. One particular, like I mentioned, the spin textures, it's a very unique, like a ready kind of in and out. So yeah, it's not instead of up and down, for example, right? Or, or around these uh, circles. So that's, uh, yeah, that's all these can be, and optically maybe even more straightforward and can, you know, can see transport is in some sense is you know right it's a, it's a kind of you from the fitting and you see the benefit so the optical basically is a circular you know you'd like to maybe see that yes Thank yeah. you. and I really I'll ask your postdoc contact me and we can arrange a you know a simple meeting and we we just yeah, thanks yeah. hi Peter <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, you go, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Peter, just sort yeah. of sort of to, to mention that uh, actually what uh, my uh, uh, student was looking at for the last uh, almost a year uh, in indium arsenide with indium arsenide aluminum structures, he sees some non-reciprocity in the critical current. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is sort of fairly small because of the, uh, the strength of uh, spin orbit, but... Uh, yeah, if uh, that's sort of uh, along the lines which uh, uh, Vlad was talking about, that uh, non-reciprocity and critical current in the presence of magnetic field also may show up in the uh, in this structure because of this strong chirality. Yes, yes. I understand that. Yeah. That I would say the, the simplest and uh, thing to look at, provided that we can induce superconductivity. <laughs> Yeah, that's one of the fancy. You know, that, that's there right. is a small if, right? And the, the physicist origin, right? So we always think about something really fancy. You know, that, uh, yeah, but to achieve that, really need a high quality material. So that's uh, right. Yeah, yeah. The coherence lens is pretty long, actually. Like uh, you know, one micrometer or a little bit less. Like let's say seven hundred nanometers. So that's me. We are able uh, to kind what of is more, enemies, right? So that's going to be good. What is, what, what is more important, it would be the uh, 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 superconducting coherence length, which is uh, delta, uh, delta over the Fermi velocity. Yes. yes. No, Fermi velocity over delta. And that's, that's that that would be more sort of uh, important parameter for a superconductor. Yes. And, and pure coherence yeah. lengths. Yeah. Um, Hi, Peter. Yeah. Well, you mentioned that a key difference uh, compared to other wire materials is that here we have a semiconductor. Okay. On this slide, you also 
it emphasizes that uh, here the wild node is at the conduction band age. Yeah, yeah that's the first, I, I believe, uh, you know, you know, that's a by definition, right? So, yeah, so yes, that's the first uh, semiconductor, you know, set, if we talk about the well material, all are, by, almost by definition, all of them are semi metal. Yes. But you need an inversion, right? Inversion band. But this is a different. This is the first. Yeah, I understand the difference, but yeah. my, quite, my real question is, so what new things can these uh, small band gap um, bring us compared to other semi-metals? Yeah, from the theoretical perspective, yes. but we are often interested in um, the properties near the band crossing points. Then yes. here, okay, there is indeed a difference. Say, well, there is a small band gap, but I'm just curious fundamentally. Okay, so, so that I what think this band gap will bring yeah, us. Yeah, I, actually, one of the review of our paper actually uh, almost touched that point. So, oh, I, so, I, 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 I talk, know I you are not going to review. I know that. <laughs> I just uh, mentioned the, 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 the same question. So I, 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 because I have to address that question. Right? Okay. So, okay. So that, that's why I answer is. Uh, so because it's a semi, uh, so that's a, you know, if you work on semi-metal, you are very difficult to use a gate to change the Fermi level uh -huh. in general, right? Because it's a metal, right? You don't uh, respond to your, uh, your field. But this is, because it's a semiconductor, so that's why we can use a gate to, uh, you know, ch let's say the cross is in the middle. So we are can up, uh, uh, up the cross, go down the cross, okay? Mm -hmm. so, but it's a, uh, in principle, right? But from transport, we just look at what, what change, but all the has a better fit. That's a meanwhile, let's say, like Fred mentioned, if we can cooperate with the optical people, if we can modulate that, uh, modulate the family level, right? Then we can, you know, do much better, you know, more, more work, look at, uh, approach the point of what happens, uh, you know, density state may change mm -hmm. mm -hmm. something like that. So that, that's the uh, advantage. You say, okay, how fundamentally uh, the uh, well semicon, you know, that, uh, you know, uh, well not is well not, right? So how fundamentally, yeah. But this, I'm on the learning curve still, okay? So because this particular is, is a, Different from the well, uh, the semi metal is well not right. Usually, you you just have a pair, right? Uh, left, uh, right, right. Uh, you know, in the semi uh, semi metal case, the well mm -hmm. not. But uh, this one is different. It's suppose one just one in the middle. Another one is far deeper in the conducting band. Usually, can mm -hmm. detect. So. Um, this is actually good. First of all. I think since you have 2D material, uh, even semi-metal is easily gateable. Like graphene, it's a semi-metal, it's easily, you can That's why only, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But, but of course, your material is interesting in regard. But I'm still confused why you call this a wild semi-metal. I mean, if-, well, if No, the, not I mean, wild semi-metal, wild- oh, Sorry, wild fermion, whatever. Because then would you call a Rashba band, which also has a crossing- Yeah, it's a different, yeah, that's, 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 that's all. That's why actually my paper is submitted to the Nature. Unfortunately, one review he, he oh, I that. was not reviewed. Imme immediately re uh, rejected the <laughs> paper. He said, uh, he said, I know you, you are not the review. He said you are doing the spin orbit interaction material, so so it's not a Nature paper. So okay, anyway. So but that's the key key question actually. Yes. So it's a, it's a different. Also, maybe it's is a, your cross yeah, band crossing a three D band crossing or two? Yeah, that's the band cross. So if yeah, we are struggling with this a long time. If it's a large bar orbit interaction material like indium arsenide, okay, you don't see the barrier phase in the two D transport. People are confused with some of the work from NTT, for example. They are make a uh, a bone rings, you know. In, with the electric field, they introduce the large terms and the, then they see the barrier phase, it's a different. This is the intrinsic property itself. In other words, large bar turn, you can say spin uh, up, spin down, it's up itself. It's, it's a round uh, circle, it doesn't introduce the barrier phase. Well, well but I, I think you just asked a question that I was about to ask. So yeah. whether or not this intersection happens in 2D or 3D, so, well, so here, you, 
to a Western model, this intersection is yeah. a two-dimensional or, or three-dimensional one. Yeah. Here you just have- Is your path crossing for all K, X, K, Y, K, Z, or this is only- Yes, K, yes, uh, yeah, 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 you are right. So this is more like uh, 3D, or in other words, it's like uh, a bow, uh, yeah, you uh, know, uh, so you, more or less like a bulk property, right? It is a bulk property in general, okay, right? If you okay. can do two uh, anti patrolling it's about so the 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 uh, the two D is a projection uh, you know projected okay. another so that, I think that that the property is still sustained yes okay so if it's three D yeah. then I would say this does look more like a while of, I mean then yeah. it, this cannot be easily gapped out by a magnet field yes that's right. In the rush bar to the that, crossing, you can apply a transverse mag field. To yeah, that's right. That's, that's right. that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Let's see, there's a question from Prame. Maybe keep uh, Prame. Maybe that's yeah, Prame, question. please. Yeah. Uh, so I think it was kind of related to this point only. Uh, so just naive question with regards to spin texture. Yeah. Now, if I go to that particular point, the while node that you are referring to. Yes. Uh, what's the spin texture at that point? Is it like a monopole? It's a very complicated. Yes, that's what we are now doing. Okay, At, you know, physics is difficult. It'll take much longer time. So yeah, the spin texture is a three D kind of. It's a very complicated. We are trying to do transport like a B field, uh, perpendicular, parallel, or the and then eventually want to figure out. Actually, we need the theoretical uh, support. Eventually, we maybe rebuild up uh, what. Uh, you know, by experiment data, we build up what the spin texture is, okay? But the spin texture on the near the knot, okay? So this is like the radio one is dominant, okay? But there's C compound exists also. It's a 3D kind of spin, uh, spin texture. Ca yes. By calculation, by some of the theoretical work. Okay, okay. And then uh, if uh, we are far away from this node and doing a transport in some direction, uh, then am I understanding correctly that depending on the direction, you will have both uh, in-plane spin pointing uh, yeah. in along the direction of current and opposite to the direction of current? Yes, yes. All right, thanks. Yeah. Actually, one very quick, maybe line. is you said this chain is kind of helical. Is the helical direction unique? If so, what determine that direction? <laughs> that's that's a word two in two. So yeah, so this is it's already three or four years now. Just struggling that. So I, I'm, yeah, I, I really want to work on kilo material actually in general. So this is yeah. So it, it is you can have left handed, you can have right handed, and uh, this energy is almost the same. In general, okay, everything same. So now I'm try try all kind of things. So I will want to distinguish by transport, by maybe optic more 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 straightforward. So to distinguish, so left handed or right handed. But by close, by you know other etching or other other kind of different method that you can do. But by magnetic transport, we are still struggling. We have some data, but we are still on the way to finish the work. So related to okay. that, again, yeah, you, you, I may ask uh, you, Fred already got to the, uh, mentioned that, right? I think, um, Fred, you mentioned the uh, uh, magneto optos, uh, optics uh, some effect, right? Yeah, there, there, there's a bunch of work now talk about the, the non-asymmetric materials, but the most uh, most of the work is the optical work because the optically is more sensitive. Can you know, some is already dead, some is not, or, or some related material did. So, but the, the transport itself is more challenging actually. Actually, you may know there's a old a work from Gert Rick. Gert Rick, I'm not sure for now. But this is from I, I, uh, nine megan high mega field. You know, he just twists a copper wire into some heat yes, and then I apply yes. in-plane field, then depending yes. on field direction, you yes. should see some yes. asymmetry. This, this um, is the fact that we do see already. Okay, that's, that's great. But, but are you saying even within a single film, 
you can have domains of left-handed, right-handed. Yes, or, or I, I get, we get all the way to do that. We can compute, you know. It's a long time, you know. That's why it's take, <laughs> I struggling for frustrated for a bit, couple of years with that. Yeah, but we do, can, you know, when, when to, and uh, our way with, you know, he's from material go, uh, angles, we are mostly from uh, transport angle, you know, but the way, uh, we are getting, almost getting there, yeah. So we do know how to control grow, how to distinguish that. So we do have the uh, electric transport data, as you mentioned that, okay, so that's why I know that well. So yeah, and the way, Developed all these, uh, yeah, but we are, but we are not, you know, because many, you know, we need to eventually summarize, yeah, at that stage, you know. So related to, related to this, one last question I have. Yes. Uh, so uh, is it known theoretically, what is the effect of chirality on the band structure of this material? I would just say yes or no, okay? So, you know, I, I do cooperate with a couple of simulation groups, you know, like uh, Tony Law, Law, like Tony Law, or UT Dallas, and uh, some others in Europe. So, so but, but it's, uh, the progress is uh, slow because uh, lot, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, particularly related with the chirality. So, uh, you know, a lot of build up, you know, eventually the DFT calculation come up, uh, the results usually don't, don't contain the information what we are really, really interested in. And it's a very complicated and, uh, you know, because of limitation or everybody's background. So, you know, it's a lot of, it's a symmetry, you know, kind of related, uh, quite a deep in physics, actually. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. Thank you. Yeah, it's a very deep in physics. So it's sometimes already beyond my, you know, my capability. So uh, we are keep struggling with that because we, it's, it, it, you know, sometimes you think it's a simple left or right, right, uh, but it's a, sometimes getting to because a lot of we have a lot of accumulated a lot of experimental results, particular on our past. So, however, our results always break some fundamental physics rules. So that's why let the DFT calculation people or some people, theoretician don't, don't uh, tend to think we did, uh, you know, not right or some way. But uh, now we're getting more and more, and it seems to be because people are not understand. You know, usually people are not dealing with this uh, this this system too much. You know, this uh, now as recent years start okay now a symmetric kind of material because two D risk. So yeah, so yeah, so yeah, that's the, our yeah status. Thank uh, you, uh, 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 Pranay. Actually, something sort of maybe uh, along what uh, you just asked uh, and what we discussed over uh, <laughs> the last uh, few weeks about the um, these uh, helical domain walls. Uh, if one would just make, uh, let's say, ferromagnetic contacts to this material, do you think that would be uh, an angular momentum selection rule if you pass current or spin up and spin down? Yes, yes I, I think, I think, yeah. But then, you know, we, we do do spin, uh, uh, simplest, of course, all spin injection detection kind of, but, uh, you know, I, I, I'm a, you know, uh, same thing as most of you, you know, here. So, uh, it, you know, it's not not easy. You know, you know that's why I, we are struggling. You know, you, like you make a 30, 40 device. I, I really, uh, you know, you don't see everyone <laughs> what you want. You see some you what you want. So, the, so that's why I, I always get get rid of this. Yeah, but we do. We did them to or three years ago, once the uh, our, uh, magnet up, so we already did that. That's, you know, it's not. It's, it's, it's not, not a clear cut. It's, yeah, yeah, it's not a convincing. So, like uh, in like quantum hall, you every device see quantum hall, right? Like a battery phase, you measure ten device, all these has a battery phase. So that I'm really confident. But uh, once you 
some of the device show in, some of the device not show in, then the I really don't let the student go too far. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. But I fundamentally, think... yes, you know, maybe spin, uh, you know, just very like uh, what Jung did, right? You know, in the the mm -hmm. uh, topological material, right? This kind of phenomenon we do see some, but we not every device see that. Okay, so that's the problem. Okay.